Welcome back, guys. I'm excited to get this session going after being gone for a bit. Me too, especially now that we're level two. Yeah, let's get this going. Before we start, Joe, did you seriously wear your pajamas again? That was only a one-time thing for last session. Wait, was it really? Are you just trying to pull my leg again, Donnie? If I pull anything on you, Joe, it may just snap right off. Is that a threat, Donald? You know, I am the current president of the United States, right? It's not a threat, you idiot. He's just calling you old, Joe. Well, that's not very nice. The truth hurts. Now, do you have a change of clothes, or are you actually playing in pajamas again? Why would I have a change of clothes, Donald? I meant to come wearing these. Way to ruin the role play aspect of all this, I guess. It's okay, Donald. It's not like you guys actually come dressed in a cosplay of your character. Yeah, I say let the man wear his PJs. Maybe I'll wear mine again next time, too. Christ, can we just start, Ben? Yeah, the PJs aren't that big of a deal. Let's just begin tonight's session. Last we were with our party, they had just finished the fight with the bugbear, Clard, and had begun to look through his belongings. Donnie and Barbin looked through his chest while Jorkus and Gralmir fumbled around in a box of spices. Eventually, they made their way to the eating den with the help of Oaf, where Donnie's loose coin pouch alerted the goblins there to their arrival, and a fight ensued. The party did fairly well, with Jorkus having his first wild magic surge showcased to the group, and the others making quick work of the goblins after a failed intimidation mid-fight by the levitating Jorkus. The party healed up the captive that was stabbed by the wannabe goblin boss, Yemek, and this prisoner joined our party before they all made their escape from the cave. In an act of kindness from Oaf to the one who had showed him nothing but the sort since being spared, he bid farewell to Yorkus before going to distract the guards outside the cave. Yorkus teared up a bit, but moved swiftly with the group back across the stream and into the woods to camp out for the night. We now pick up in the morning, with the party mostly recovered from their wounds and a small trek ahead of them, back to their wagon left alongside the road the previous day. Well done making it this far, guys. What would you like to do? Rise and shine, gentlemen. Let's get a move on back to our wagon and on towards Fandolin. Five more minutes, Dad, please. Yeah, how early is it? Yeah, I'll take another five minutes, too. My gut still hurts a bit from that stab wound. What time does it appear to be, Ben? You guys were out late freeing Sildar, so the sun is getting fairly high up already. You estimate maybe about nine or 10 o'clock. Give me your sword, Barbin, I'll get them up. This should go well. I'm gonna start banging the shit out of Barbin and I swords against each other by their ears. Oh, get up, you pansies. We're burning daylight. Ha 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 ha, what the hell? Jesus, Donnie, fine, we're up. Holy shit, that was amazing. Let's just get going already. All right, everyone, pack your things and let's go. Okay, now that our party has fully woken up, they'll make their way back towards the wagon and the oxen. With Barbin guiding them, they make sure to avoid the pitiful goblin traps set on the path and easily arrive back to where they were first ambushed. Where'd you guys park our wagon at? Should be over here, right, Yorkus? Yeah, follow me and I'll lead them a bit into the woods towards where Gralmir and I left everything. Just for fun, Yorkus, give me a general intelligence check. That's a 10. Oh gosh, can I help too? Maybe look for tracks or something? Yeah, sure, roll survival. That's a 14, a bit better. Although it takes them a minute, Yorkus and Gralmir eventually find where they had parked the wagon, and thankfully, the oxen are still here tied up. I'm gonna hop on the front. Can one of you untie the oxen? I'll untie them and hop in the front too. Barbin, let's go clear the road for the cart. Those dead horses are probably still there. Oh great, just how I wanted to start my day. Let's go, I guess. That's the spirit. Well, now with the wagon secured and the road cleared, our party can make their way to Fandolin. You guys will travel without any further issue and reach the outskirts of the town only a couple of hours later with plenty of daylight left still. You have no idea how nice it is to be here finally. I can imagine, speaking of which, what happened to Gundren? He wasn't at the cave with you, it seems. I overheard you, Mick. He said something about the Black Spider wanting him at Cragmaw Castle along with anything he had on him. The Black Spider? Cragmaw Castle? Psychomantis. Nice one, Barry. Yeah, I'm not sure who that is or where Cragmaw Castle is, but I'm fairly certain as to what the Black Spider wanted with him. Have you guys heard of Wave Echo Cave? Lore time. Would we know of that, Ben? All of you would, especially you considering your friendship with Gundren. More than 500 years ago, clans of dwarves and gnomes made an agreement known as the Fandelver's Pact, by which they would share a rich mine in a wondrous cavern known as Wave Echo Cave. In addition to its mineral wealth, the mine contained great magical power. Human spellcasters allied themselves with the dwarves and gnomes to channel and bind that energy into a great forge, 
called the Forge of Spells, where magic items could be crafted. Times were good, and the nearby human town of Phandalin prospered as well. But then disaster struck when orcs swept through the north and laid waste to all in their path. A powerful force of orcs, reinforced by evil mercenary wizards, attacked Wave Echo Cave to seize its riches and magic treasures. Human wizards fought alongside their dwarf and gnome allies to defend the Forge of Spells, and the ensuing spell battle destroyed much of the cavern. Few survived the cave-ins and tremors, and the location of Wave, Echo Cave, was lost. Did they bring him there or something? No, but Gundren had secrets he hid even from you. He and his brothers Tharden and Nundro recently found an entrance to the cave. The Black Spider probably wants Gundren for his map and any other information he has. His map? Shit. What is it? We found his empty map case where you guys were ambushed. They have it and him as well. I figured as much this does not bode well. Any idea where this castle is? No, but maybe we can ask around town for any rumors or leads. I have some business to take care of there as well. Anything we can help with? We'll see. I know a man named Yarno Albrecht in Fandolin. He may be able to help us. Perfect. Let's speak to him after we drop off these supplies. The Lord's Alliance works to establish order and safety in the free cities of the area, which is why Yarno was sent here. But we have not heard from him in over two months, thus why I'm coming to find him. Hmm, all right. We'll have to keep an ear out. At this time, you all begin to pull into the town, and the first building you see on your left is labeled as Barthen's Provisions, the location you were meant to drop off your supplies. All right, here's our stop, guys. I'll holler out, Barthen, you here? A moment later, a middle-aged man with a pretty bad receding hairline walks out to greet you. Ah, Sildar, and the supplies, no less. Who the hell was that? Chill out, Joe, don't break the wall. The what? Oh, yeah. Thanks. Good to see you, Barthen, how's business? Now that this wagon is here, a bit better. It'd be great, though, if those damn Red Brands weren't harassing us all day and night, though. Red Brands, is that some kind of cult? Would I know anything about this? You haven't heard anything about a Red Brand menace. It's pretty strange. Barthen proceeds to tell you that it's some local thug group shaking down shop owners and causing mischief in the street. Strange indeed. Maybe we should look into this. You guys know I hate a thief. If you're looking to help, try going to Sleeping Giant Tap House. They cause trouble there most often. Maybe we'll stop by there tonight. Before you guys do go, though, I have your payment. Barthen will proceed to hand you all 10 gold each, including you, Sildar. But he'll look puzzled for a moment as he takes a second look at you. How did I not notice until now? Where's your armor? Oh, yeah. Gundren and I were ambushed on our way here by goblins. They took him in the map. I'm only alive because of these four sticking their necks out to help me. Barthen takes a deep sigh. I suppose that answers my next question. I hope you guys can find some way to save him too. He's a dear friend of mine. He and his brothers mean to do such good things. I think those two should be back in town in the next couple of days. Hopefully we can speak with them. Maybe they'll know where Cragmaw Castle is. I hope so. Make sure to get yourself some new gear before you go out again though, Sildar. Maybe stop by the blacksmith. We have some errands to run. I'm sure we'll all come by at some point again soon. You guys stay safe. Barthen will call his assistants out and they'll all begin to start unloading the wagon of supplies as you walk off. I have not forgotten your guys' service for me and I will pay you all back as soon as possible. I can secure a loan from the town master in order to get gear and pay you soon after. Let's head there first. Let's get you all geared up, and then we can go find these red brands. They sound like a pain in the ass to everyone here. Yeah, let's head to the town hall. You all take in the site. The town consists of 40 or 50 simple log buildings, some built on old fieldstone foundations. More old ruins, crumbling stone walls covered in ivy and briars, surround the newer houses and shops, showing how this must have been a much larger town in centuries past. Most of the newer buildings are set on the sides of the cart track, which widens into a muddy main street of sorts as it climbs toward a ruined manor house on a hillside at the east side of town. As you approach, you see children playing on the town green and townsfolk tending to chores or running errands at shops. Many people look up as you approach, but all return to their business as you go by. After the short walk you arrive, the town master's hall has sturdy stone walls, a pitched wooden roof, and a bell tower at the back. Posted on a board next to the front door is a notice written in common. It reads, reward, orcs near Wyvern Tor. 
those of a mind to face the orc menace should inquire within. The notice bears the town's seal and an indecipherable signature. Sounds interesting. Maybe we should ask the town master about this. A wyvern tour sounds scary as shit. You sure? Well, apparently the issue is orcs, not wyverns. We'll just ask about it first and decide later. That's fine with me, yeah. As you all enter the hall, you see quite a mess, along with a handful of people trying to make some semblance of order out of it all. Among them all is a pompous, older man with small glasses. Sildar, you would recognize this as Harbin Wester, the town master, banker, and judge of sorts. Harbin looks as tidy as ever in here. Sildar, well, what might you be doing here? I take it you did not open the letter from the guild. I was to be expected. Oh, uh, I, uh, of course I opened it. It must have just slipped my mind. He's totally full of it, isn't he? Roll insight. Got 13. This guy cracks like an egg. He's obviously lying. This is only helped by the pile of unopened letters on a desk to the side. Yeah, it must have. Well, I am here to acquire a loan as payment for these folk who helped me and to supply myself with new gear as a result of a recent predicament. Yeah, you look like hell. What happened? Goblins happened, and I heard things have not gone great here recently either. What do you mean? This guy's annoying me already. We've been in town for less than an hour and have already heard of a gang causing havoc in your streets. Oh, please. Those red brands? Just your typical mercenary guild. Yeah, cut the crap. A Mert guild wouldn't be robbing potential customers. Well, I don't know anything about robbing, but... Look, we're willing to help, but we can't do so until Sildar is equipped properly. Donnie, roll persuasion with advantage because of Barbin. That's 18 total. Okay, okay, fine. How much would you need? How much is chain armor at the smith, as well as a decent sword and shield? I'll do a loan for, say, 110 gold. That should cover it. And 40 extra to pay these four who saved my ass. Fine. The Alliance better make good on this, though. We'll make good by clearing your town of vermin. Speaking of which, who was sent here to do that before us? Ah, uh, yes, Yarno. What has he been up to? We have not heard word from him. Haven't seen him in maybe a couple of months. Any of you lot know what happened to that Yarno fella? One of the maids looks up and quietly states they heard he disappeared while exploring near Tresendar Manor. There you have it. Check the manor, maybe. Now wait here a sec while I fetch your loan. A minute goes by. And then another. Then two more. This guy better hurry up. I'm gonna go get some fresh air. Same here. We'll meet you guys outside. Finally, after about eight minutes, Harbin returns from around the corridor, holding a medium-sized pouch. Sign here, and you're good to go. I'll sign it. Will that be all? I'm quite busy, as you can see. We wanted to ask about the sign outside, something about orcs? Yeah, there's a whole band of them east on the Tribor Trail by the Wyvern Tor. If you guys want to look into it, there's a reward of 100 gold for anyone able to get rid of them. All right, thanks. I believe that's all. Well, then you folks have a good one. You as well, Harbin. You guys finished in there? Let's go to the blacksmith and get Sildar kitted up. On the way there, Ben, I'll tell those two about the quest to get rid of the orcs and the reward involved with it. We got a new quest? Yippee! This guy, man. I'm not your guy, pal. I'm not your pal, buddy. I'm not your buddy, friend. Oh, would you two shut up? After speaking to some locals, you find the best place to get some equipment would be the Lion's Heald Coster. Would you like to make your way there? Yep, time to splash some cash. Oh, and I'll give each of them 10 gold that I got from the loan for helping me out. Thanks, Sildar. Yeah, appreciate it. Only seems fair. You all find the place, and hanging above the front door of this modest trading post is a sign shaped like a wooden shield with a blue lion painted on it. A middle-aged woman with brown hair gives a quick greeting as you all come in. Hey, what can I help you with? Uh, mama, mama. Uh, what the hell, Donald? Let the man cook. Hell fucking no, you two are insane. This is literally make-believe. But, but... Bill, just buy what you need so we can get the hell out of here. Isn't your character like 20-something, Donald? Ben said she's middle-aged, dude. I'm old enough. Let me riz her up. Yeah, let's just speed this up. I'm getting creeped out, too. I'm gonna approach her and ask about armor, a sword, and shield. She'll show you a selection of each, totaling 100 gold. Sounds good to me. I'll also ask her how business is. And about the red brands. 
Before she takes your gold and hands over the items, she asks, You ain't with them, are you? No, ma'am, we're actually working to bring them to justice. Roll persuasion. That's 14. She'll laugh a bit. Justice in this place? Well, I wish you luck. Here, if you're working to take them down, then I'll do business with you. The woman will pull your gold across the counter and pushes the gear towards you. I assume they bothered you too, ma'am? It's Linen, and yeah. Between them and my most recent shipment getting stolen, I've nothing but trouble recently. A shipment of what, exactly? Well, weapons, of course. Was there also spices? Spices? No, just stuff from my trading post. Ben, can I remember seeing any gear back at Clark's cave other than spices? Try to roll intelligence. Got a 13. From best you remember, and due to leaving pretty quick after getting free from the shipment of spices, you don't recall any weapons in those boxes. Dang it, maybe they weren't hers anyway. Another one of them had ale in it. Well, just in case your goods were the ones we came across, do you have a map? I got a spare one somewhere, hold on. Once she shows me, I'll pinpoint about where Cragmaw Cave was. Is there a chance you'd be selling one of these maps? You can have this one, and I'll mark the location on my personal one. Let's say, seven gold and it's yours. I'll do that, thank you, ma'am. Anything else? She gives Donnie a strange look while he sits there, looking like a lost dog. Haha, <laughs> I think that'll be all. All right, be careful, you guys. Thank you, you too. Um, right. Real smooth, Donnie. She didn't seem creeped out by you at all. I agree. I think she has the hots for me. More like not. Yeah, you're jealous. It's okay, Jorkas. After an awkward encounter, Sildar has some fresh gear, and the evening is yours. Let's secure ourselves some rooms for tonight and then head to that tap house to meet some red brands. It's only a short walk. In the center of town stands a large, newly built roadhouse of fieldstone and rough-hewn timbers. As your party walks in, the common room is filled with locals nursing mugs of ale or cider, all of them eyeing you with curiosity. Come on, Donnie, let's go see how much for rooms. There's some new faces. What can I do for you two? We're hoping to rent some rooms for the next few nights. We can do that. And how many you needin'? I'd rather not share a room. Spend your money then, that's up to you. How many beds to a room? Usually it's two per room, but seeing as you want your own, we do have a more comfortable one, though it costs a bit more. Yeah, that's fine. How much for the one-person room? That's eight silver a day for that one, and five silver a day for the regular rooms. I'll pay enough for two rooms for maybe like 10 days. 10 days? Fuck! I'll put up 80 silver for mine. Very nice. All right, guys, here's your keys to the rooms. Come on back down whenever you want a drink or meal. Uh, thank you. Your name? It's Toblin. Stay safe, guys. As we're walking back to the others, why does everyone say to stay safe? Probably because there's a gang roaming about, duh. These guys that scared? I mean, people here have families. You don't want your kids getting mixed up in bad business? I suppose, yeah, let's take care of these punks as quick as we can then. I like your attitude, Donnie. Got some rooms? Yep, we're all good for the next 10 days. Let's go check out the tap house now. Should be interesting. You begin to walk around town until you spot it. The Sleeping Giant is a ramshackle tap room at the east end of town. Four human ruffians linger on the covered porch, perched on empty ale barrels or leaning against the wall. They all wear grimy scarlet cloaks, their sullen stares fixed on you as you approach. Oh man, I'm getting excited. Yeah, this should be fun. One of the thugs spits on the ground. Well, well, he snarls. Here's a whole pack of little puppies. What do you want, puppies? Come here to bark at us? You guys respond? Nope, we're walking in this bitch. Oh shit, okay. The thugs look perplexed as you all seem to just ignore them and walk into the bar. There any more thugs in here? You spot about three more scattered amongst some other citizens in crappy attire. They haven't looked over yet, as they're all at the bar drinking. Do I need to roll wild magic for mage armor? Hmm. I'd say not unless you really want to. Okay, I'll just cast it, but not roll going forward. Let's go take a seat, boys. Bar looks lively. Excuse me, is this seat taken? And I'll push him out of the chair. Haha, <laughs> he's surprised, so I won't have you roll. The red brand stands up pissed now that his drink has spilled all over him. Who the hell are you? We're new here. Sorry I didn't learn my manners growing up. How about I teach you some? How about you shut the hell up? I'm gonna take the mug from the idiot next to me and smash this clown over the head with it. If you're gonna do that, we're gonna roll initiative. Let's do it, guys. Yes, dirty 20. Why are my initiatives always so good? 
That's a five. Why are mine always so bad? I only got four. Got six over here. Jesus, guys. Got 14. There we go. Okay, order is Donnie, two red brands, Jorkus, the third red brand, Sildar, Barbin, then Gralmir. How you starting us off, Donnie? I'll throw my sword onto the floor and say, fight me like a man, you punk. I'm going for a swing with an ale mug. Go ahead and roll for a persuasion to see if he takes up the challenge, and then roll for an attack. 12 persuasion and 17 to hit. Use a d6 for the mug damage. Three bludgeoning. All right, nice. Although you got a good hit on him, it seems like he'd rather use his sword than his fist. Anything else for your turn? I'm just gonna stand here goading him and yelling, bar fight! All right, that red brand is gonna take a stab at you. A 12 misses. I'm gonna anticipate his lunge and parry his arms out of the way, baby. Using that momentum, the thug will use his movement to shift to behind you and end his turn. Now it's the second red brand. This one is gonna stumble out of his stool and go for Jorkes. He's gonna multi-attack, and that's two 16s to hit. Oh man, that just gets me. That's nine slashing damage from the two attacks. Go ahead now, Yorkus. Shit, I'm already hurting. I'm gonna run away and hope he misses me. 19 to hit, and five slashing from the opportunity attack. Holy shit, I'm at one. I'm gonna run to the far west corner of the bar and cast a chaos bolt at that red brand. Ooh, nice, let's see it. Oh man, I crit failed. Jorkus's bolt of wild magic flies right past the drunken red brand and through the roof, letting in a bit of the evening sky. Go ahead and do that wild magic roll. That's 16 and 15, I'm good. That's gonna end my turn. The third red brand will run to Gromir and attack now. That's an eight, so his turn is already over. Going to Sildar's turn, you begin to hear shuffling from the front door. If I lock that door, it may buy us some more time. Yeah, I would do that. Solid plan, Sildar. All right, Ben, I'm gonna run to the door to slam it shut completely and lock it. Could I pull a bench over in front of it too? That'd be all your movement, but yeah. Fair enough, that's my turn. Ha, you're locked in here with us now, boys. All right, I'm gonna run to back up Jorkus and take a shot at the one next to Gralmir. 23 to hit and 10 total damage, including sneak attack. Nice, this guy is seriously fucked up now. Go ahead, Gralmir. Casting Shillelagh, then gonna go for the one on me. 21 to hit and 11 damage. That's one down. Say it with me, boys. Bonk and bonk time. time. I'm gonna run to flank the guy near Donnie and end my turn. Top of the round, let's see how the door wedge fares. The thugs outside are putting some serious pressure on it, and it looks like they'll be able to make their way in any second. But for now, it's holding, and Donnie is up. I'm punching the shit out of this guy. Roll with advantage, Gralmir is flanking. 18 to hit and six damage. Come at me! A 16 just gets you, that's eight damage. The other attack misses. The other red brand is gonna go for you now, and he's flanking too. Wow, out of four rolls, one hit. That's another six slashing. You're up, Jorkus. I'm gonna firebolt the guy behind Donnie. Nice, that's 22 to hit and eight damage. I'm gonna move back further into the bar and cower in the corner. Well, all right then, go ahead, Sildar. I'm gonna hold my action to take a strike at the first red brand to get in range of me from the front door. Smart, that all for now? Yep. Shooting at the same guy as Jorkus. Damn it, a nine misses. I'm gonna go to hide behind one of the benches in the corner to get the jump on the guys entering and end my turn. Roll stealth, then you're up, Gralmir. Got 21. Noted. Bro, just got critted on. Didn't you want to change the rules on 20s? Yeah, we'll roll two dice still, but the first will always be max damage. The other will remain rolled. Well, then that's 17 damage. Holy crap. Jesus, nice one. This guy gets flung over the bar. He's out cold. That's all from me. Top of the round, the four thugs from outside barge in. I'll be adding them to the initiative. Go ahead, Donnie. One last punch on the guy behind me, then I'm picking up my sword. 22 to hit and six more damage. With that, the last thug from the bar is taken care of. Now it's the ones from outside. I'm gonna pick up my sword and use second wind to regain some HP before joining Sildar. That's seven HP, nice. Can I reach the closest guy that ran into the bar? Yeah, oh, this would have triggered Sildar's reaction as well. 
Go ahead and roll that ready to attack real quick. 17 to hit and seven damage. Nice. All right, yeah, you can make it there, Donnie. I'm gonna action surge and run to attack the same guy. Awesome, go ahead. Does 14 hit? Just barely roll damage. 14, hell yeah. That's two KOs from Donnie in one turn. Good shit, man. Fuck yeah, that's my turn. Yorkus and then Red Brands. Casting Chaos Bolt again at one of those guys. That's a dirty 20 and 14 thunder damage. A resounding boom fills the bar as Yorkus's bolt hits its target this time. This guy is barely standing. Roll wild magic, buddy. I'm not your buddy, guy. Just roll it, Joe. Oh, yeah, that's right. Oh, God. No way, not again. That's a 14 and a, uh, a one. Uh, well, here we go. Go ahead and make a deck save, Joe. Oh, Lord. Bro, definitely just fireballed himself. It was fun while it lasted, gentlemen. That's an eight. After the wonderful blast of Jorkus's magic smashing upon the red brand, he begins to crackle with energy. As you all look to him in shock and worry in the back of the bar, he suddenly busts his ass on a large puddle of grease that spreads all around him. Wait, what? There's no way. Yeah, I for sure thought you just blasted yourself. Yep, I rolled a 20. Jorkus casted grease on himself on accident. Well, I'll take that, I suppose. That's my turn. The red brand wounded from Jorkus's magic will take a swing at Donnie and miss terribly. What is up with my rolls? Don't feel too bad, Ben. At least you didn't get yourself all lubed up like Greasy Joe over there. Oh, that creeps me out. Yeah, same. Anyways, the next red brand will swing at Sildar. A 17, finally. Sorry, Ben, my AC is 18. Damn it, go ahead, Bill. I'm gonna try to finish off the one on Death's Door. 15 to hit for eight slashing. That makes just two thugs left. All right, I'm all done. Another red brand is gonna go for you too. A 19 and a dirty 20, there we go. That's 11 damage. You now, Barbin, and you're hidden, so attack with advantage. 16 to hit. That's seven, including sneak on the one fighting Sildar. Then I'll use my cunning action to dash all the way to behind the bar and pass to Grelmir. I'm gonna do my usual muttering of random crap under my breath and cast Earth Tremor under the two thugs. They need to make a DC 13 deck save. Okay, the uninjured one failed and the other saved. Okay, he will take five damage and be knocked prone. The other is unaffected. Prone? Oh man, this is too perfect. I'm also gonna healing word on Yorkus for four HP. And that's all, go get him Donnie. Attacking at advantage on the prone dude. 17 to hit, and that's 12 damage. Night, night. Indeed, you stab him clean through, and the last guy is standing there, helpless, basically. Don't kill this guy, Jorkus. We need him. You got it, Donnie. I'm gonna walk forward a bit and, and uh, wait, I guess. Fair enough. Go ahead, Sildar. I will put my palm out towards the red brand and simply say drop. That's command with a wisdom DC of 14. Interesting, let's see what happens. This guy just got a natural one and has a negative one modifier. I'm kind of glad you're rolling like Dookie. We took on a bit more than I would have liked, to be honest. Yeah, a risk, but it seems to have paid off. What's this guy doing then? He will drop his sword and end his turn. We'll end combat here then. I assume you're all gonna tie him up and get to talking? Yeah, this guy can hopefully lead us to whoever's the head honcho. Uh, okay, well, with the bar fight finished, we'll end this session. That was one hell of a fight, guys. Took some balls to stroll in there. I doubt the owner will be happy, but we can take care of that next session. Oh man, I didn't really consider that. Yeah, we'll have to find a way to make it up to him. So our party has finally made it to Fandolin. In just the short time they've been here, they've made some money, secured some rooms for the next 10 day, creeped out a trader, and had a bar fight to round the day off. I'd say that was a pretty productive session. Lots of things to do next time as well. We're still doing magic though, right? Yeah, Michelle is still cool with us doing it at our place this time. God, she isn't cooking, is she? I'll make sure she knows you said that. Fuck, 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 don't do that. <laughs> let's just head over there and get to playing. <laughs> Good choice, all right, let's pack our stuff and head over. One of you wanna do the outro this time? Yeah, we'll uh, catch you guys later. And thanks for uh, watching. We'll work on it, I guess. Thanks for the patience with the uploads, guys. We all love you and have a great one. Bar fight! <laughs>